If you get inner thigh pain, you may wonder what's causing it and what you can do to relieve it. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. Whenever I evaluate a patient with inner thigh pain, or really any type of pain for that matter, I'm looking at basically four categories of different things. Number one, is it even a musculoskeletal problem? I'm a physical therapist, so for non-musculoskeletal things, people really don't belong in my clinic. And with inner thigh pain, there are some more serious considerations. For example, kidney stones, urinary tract infections, hernias, those can all cause inner thigh pain. Now, largely, that's not the most common thing, so I wouldn't jump straight to being worried about those things. But if you notice that your symptoms vary, for example, when you're urinating, or if you've had some irregularities in your period, if you're a woman, or if you're getting abdominal cramps, those are all signs of more of an internal medicine cause that you need to talk more to your doctor about. But many types of inner thigh pain are caused from musculoskeletal causes. And the first cause I would look at is joint problems. What joints can refer pain to the area? In the case of inner thigh pain, it's usually the hip joint. Now, hip arthritis is the most common problem, particularly in the age group of people that I see, but other problems such as labral tears that are inside the hip can also refer pain to the inner thigh. Now, if you're having a hip joint problem, you'll probably notice the pain either when you're weight bearing, when you're bearing weight down on the actual hip joint, or at end ranges of motion, for example, end range flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. That puts the hip joint in the most compressed, compact, closed pack position. And so if your pain in your inner thigh increases more on weight bearing, or when you're in an end range position, that may indicate more of a joint problem. Next, we wanna look at muscular causes. And there are a lot of muscles in the inner thigh. Those are collectively known as the hip adductors because they bring the hip into adduction or bring it towards midline. Now, there are several different hip adductor muscles, and you don't need to know the names of all of them, but essentially they all bring the leg towards midline. Now, if you have a muscle problem, you'll probably notice it either when you exert the muscle, for example, when you push inwards against force, or when you stretch the muscle to end range, when you bring the leg out to the side. Now, it's worth noting that muscles can hurt because they're either overstretched or strained. For example, if you slip on ice and your leg goes out to the side, or if you're playing a sport and you cut really quickly and it overstretches the muscle, you can get a groin strain. But you can also get inner thigh pain from muscles that are too short. And it's important to know which one you're dealing with because the treatment approaches are opposite. If you have an overstretched or strained or partially torn muscle, you don't want to stretch it farther, which is the common thing that many people try doing when they have a sore muscle. Conversely, if you have a muscle that's stiff, for example, if you sit with your legs crossed a lot, or if you sleep on your side at night without a pillow between your knees, you're spending a lot of time during the day either sitting or lying on your side with your legs together. And that makes those inner thigh muscles tight. In that case, stretching probably is the appropriate treatment. And we'll get to some stretches that you can do if you have stiffness in your inner thigh muscles. But it is a good point to note that if you do have stiffness in the inner thigh muscles, you want to avoid sitting for long periods of time with your legs crossed like this. Probably using a pillow between your thighs when you're sleeping at night to help keep your thighs parallel as opposed to put together like that will help you get long-term lasting relief. Because you can stretch your muscles for a minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, but if you're spending a third of your day at night sleeping with your legs together, you're not gonna make any ground. So using a pillow between your knees when you sleep is a really good tip to help you both with short-term and lasting relief of inner thigh pain from stiff muscles. Now, the final category that we'll get onto before we get into some specific treatments are nerve problems. 
there's a nerve that runs down through your inner thigh known as the obturator nerve. And it runs right through the adductor group there. So if you have stiff adductor muscles, that can put pressure on that obturator nerve. If you feel a burning pain on the inner thigh, or if you notice some numbness and tingling on the inner thigh, that may indicate a nerve problem. Additionally, that obturator nerve is made from the L2, L3, and L4 nerve roots in your lower back. And so it's also possible that if you have a pinched nerve in the upper to middle part of your lower back, that that can cause inner thigh pain. And so as you can see, there are many different things that can cause pain on your inner thigh. And it is important to get a proper diagnosis to figure out which one you're dealing with so you can get to the proper treatment approach. Now, I would say by far the most common things that I see are joint problems and muscle problems causing inner thigh pain. Hip arthritis and stiff trigger points, so the muscle being too short rather than being overstretched or strained. So we'll get into treatments for the muscular causes first because those are the easiest to address. Now, like I mentioned, you probably do want to avoid sitting with your legs crossed or sleeping without a pillow between your knees. So you wanna put a pillow between your knees when you're sleeping. But it's also helpful to stretch out the inner thigh muscles. And here's one really easy exercise that you can do to stretch out the inner thigh muscles that works really well. You can do it without getting on the floor. So here's how you do it. Sit on a couch, a bed, a chair, you actually can do it sitting on the floor, but if you have trouble getting on the floor, then you can do it just as easily on a bed. You wanna sit like this with your feet together and then push your elbows down into your knees. Now you can pull your feet in as far or not far as you feel comfortable going, but the farther in you pull, the greater a stretch it is gonna be on your inner thighs. Then you wanna use your elbows to kind of push your knees down towards the bed. Now this isn't gonna be just a static stretch where you're pushing down because when you pull on tight muscles, they tend to fight back against you. And so we're gonna use a neurological trick to get these muscles to relax. So you're gonna push down with your elbows, now push back in against your elbows with your knees. So you're gonna push into your elbows, kind of holding an isometric resistance here for about five to 10 seconds. So you're actually contracting those stiff muscles. Now, after you do that, relax. And after you contract a muscle, it goes through a period of relaxation where it allows you to stretch it a little bit farther. That uses a principle known as autogenic inhibition, meaning that the muscle inhibits itself. So you press into your elbows using your thigh muscles, and then you relax, and then push them outwards farther using your elbows. Now, to help even further, you're gonna use your glute muscles, your butt muscles, and try to actively pull your knees down towards the bed. And this activates your glute muscles and uses a principle known as reciprocal inhibition to make the inner thigh muscles relax. So when you contract your glutes, the adductors relax. And so you'll push down farther, contract your glutes to help pull the knees down towards the bed and hold that about 10 seconds or so. Now push back into your elbows using your adductor muscles and hold that for 10 seconds. Relax, push down a little bit farther. Now use your glutes, your butt muscles, to pull the knees out towards the bed and hold that for about 10 seconds. And then push back in to your elbows, hold that for about 10 seconds, stretch down a little bit farther. And so you alternate back and forth between pushing, stretching, and pulling down towards the bed. And that helps you get progressively farther and farther down and stretch out those stiff inner thigh muscles. Now, another way you can stretch out your inner thigh muscles, if you come up to standing, is to lean out to the side like this. 
Now this isn't gonna be a massive side lunge this way. You actually wanna make this a little bit of an active stretch, just like the last one. And so rather than stretching out passively as far as you can possibly go, you want to push off of this leg. And so you're using your glute muscles again, using that reciprocal inhibition, activating the glutes, inhibiting the adductors, holding for about 10 seconds, and then relaxing. Spread out a little bit farther, push using your glutes, hold for about 10 seconds, back off, slide out a little farther, push off. And so you're stretching and strengthening at the same time. And that's really important because if you have stiff inner thigh muscles, it's going to make your glutes weaker. And if you have weak glutes, it's gonna make your inner thigh muscles stiffer. So they work kind of hand in hand and you wanna work on both of them at the same time. Now, another really great exercise that you can use to actively stretch your adductors and strengthen your glutes at the same time is known as the horse stance. Now, this is a little bit more advanced exercise. This one may not be for everyone, but if it's not for you, hang in there because I've got a modification that I'll show you. So for this one, you wanna start out slightly wider than shoulders width apart, and then go down into a little bit of a squat. Now you wanna think about driving your knees out that way and sink down as low as you can comfortably. The ideal is to get too parallel here, but some people can't get that far and that's okay. However far down you can get, use your elbows to push your knees out, very similar to the sitting stretch that we did just a little bit earlier. And then you're gonna use your glutes to kind of pull the legs out as well. Now this is an active stretch, but it is a little bit harder. It's not for everyone. And if you're someone who thinks that, gosh, I couldn't do that, I would get stuck down there. That's okay. I've got a modification for you. And I'll show that to you right now. For the modified version of the horse stance, you just wanna sit on a chair and straddle the back of the chair, then put your feet on the ground. You're gonna push your heels down into the ground, just as if you were squatting and then drive your knees out a little bit farther. So you're still using your glute muscles actively and you're stretching your inner thigh muscles while you're strengthening your glutes. Now, I've got a whole video that goes through this modified horse stance. And so I'll refer you to that one for more details on how to do it. And you can find the link up in the right hand corner over here. Now, what if you have more of a joint problem? What if you have inner thigh pain from hip arthritis. Well, in that case, the pain is actually coming from the ball pressing up into the socket. Now, when you're standing, if you have weak glutes, that's gonna cause your pelvis to drop down a little bit and put more force on that hip joint. And so it's important that you strengthen your glute muscles. Now, the other stretching exercises that we just did all incorporated the glutes. So those are good, not just for muscle problems, but also for hip arthritis pain that's being referred down into the inner thigh. But it is important, especially if you have hip arthritis, that you be able to balance yourself appropriately on one leg. And so standing on one leg while activating your glutes and keeping your belt level with the floor is a really important exercise if you do have hip arthritis. Now, additionally, you wanna make sure you maintain as much mobility as possible in the joint. If you notice that you have increased pain when you're pulling your knee up or across your body or into internal rotation, and you're feeling a pinching in the groin and that increases your inner thigh pain, it's likely that your joint may be causing some of the problem. Now, if you were in the clinic, we'd use hands-on techniques to manually mobilize the joint and create more space, stretch out the capsule and stretch out some of the muscles that are causing the hip joint to be stiff and compressed. And if you are in the St. Louis area, we'd be happy to help you out here in the office. But if you're watching from somewhere else, I can't quite reach through the screen and help mobilize your hip. But fortunately, I do have another video where you can learn some tips that you can use to mobilize your own hip at home. But before you go check that one out, if you found this video helpful, 
make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.